Hello colleagues and um, welcome back to day two of the Centre for Online and Distance Education RIDE conference. I uh, hope you've enjoyed your parallel sessions and our, our first uh, keynote this morning. Um, and we're now moving to a really important part of the programme, which is where we celebrate some real innovation in practice. And I'm delighted to welcome at the University of London's Vice Chancellor, Professor Wendy Thompson, to introduce this for us. Wendy. Thanks so much, uh, Linda. Uh, it's really my pleasure to announce and introduce the winning team for the 2022 Roger Mills Prize for Innovation in Learning and Teaching. This prize, uh, sponsored by the University of London Worldwide, is named in memory of Roger Mills, long-standing and well-loved former fellow of the Center for Online and Distance Education and Pro Vice Chancellor of the Open University UK. Roger made a major contribution to the support of innovation in learning and teaching in the University of London through his contribution to projects and academic policy development. This prize commemorates his contribution. And I am delighted that Roger's Dr. Victoria Mills, Roger's daughter, and a lecturer in Victorian studies at Birkbeck has joined us for this event. It is um, on my phone here, so I think it's a little bit, uh, uh, it, you know, it's a pleasure to know that Roger's family continue to engage with this celebration of innovation in learning and teaching. Oh, to those working at the University of London and member institutions, we received five very strong applications as follows. The Bayes Digital Learning, University of London, Professional Graduate Certificate, PGCE, Teacher Development, Kim Inslee, UCL, Dissection at Distance, Interactive Live Streaming of Practical Anatomy by MS Teams from the Royal Veterinary College, Fourth, fostering interdisciplinary researchers, PhD training and support at SOAS, Yen Li from the School of Oriental and African Studies, SOAS. And finally, enhancing doctoral supervision in UCL, the Institute of Education and beyond, Jenny Golding, UCL. Members of the judging panel were Professor Mary Stiasny, OBE and PVC International Learning and Teaching, Professor Alan Tate, CODE Fellow, Neil Mosley, also a CODE Fellow, and Dr. Linda Amran Cooper, Chair and Director of the CODE. Panel members were very impressed by the quality of each of the applications. Each project takes a scholarly and rigorous approach to enhancing student learning through innovation in digital education. Although it was difficult to select just one winner, in the end, we were clear that one project stood out, and this was the dissection at distance, interactive live streaming of practical anatomy via MS Teams, Sarah Channon from the Royal Veterinary College. The panel commended the high level of innovation which centered on synchronous events and noted that this allow for high quality learning and enhances the sense of community. There were clear opportunities for transferable practice in this, uh, in this application uh, and learning and teaching strategies focused on student engagement and learning are delivered through highly effective and thoughtful use of technology. We are pleased that the winning team from RBC are able to join us to provide a short introduction to their work. And I hand over to Sarah Channon who led the submission for the Roger Mills Prize to 2022 from the RBC. Over to you, Sarah. Thanks very much, Wendy. I'm just going to share my screen. So it's um, it's an absolute uh, pleasure and an honour to receive the Roger Mills Award um, and to be able to share the work on behalf of the team this morning. And our project um, was born out of necessity during the pandemic um, and is absolutely a genuine team effort in absolutely every aspect. And this is some of us, and um, just after we returned to face to face teaching, um, we have a really big team of anatomists um, and support staff at the RVC, and um, because we uh, are committed to delivering really high quality practical anatomy teaching and um, to lots of veterinary medicine students. 
Um, but during the pandemic, this strength became a bit of a problem. So the question for us was, how do we continue to do this for our future critical workers um, when they just couldn't join us on campus for whatever reason? So this is our norm. Um, as you can see, there's a lot going on here um, other than just students learning anatomy. So of course, there are some knowledge-based learning outcomes that students are working towards, um, but everything else that's going on here is equally as important. So students are, um, when they're in person in the dissection room, they're working together in small groups. So they're developing their key professional skills. They're communicating with each other. They're communicating with us. They're learning to work as a team, but they're also developing key cognitive and so psychomotor skills. So they're touching and handling the material and they're manipulating it. So it's very dynamic. Um, they're developing key visual skills, spatial skills, observational skills, um, and they're learning to follow instructions and they're questioning. And when things go wrong, they're having to problem solve. So there's an awful lot going on um, within these sessions. Um, and for us, the real question that we were faced with is how can we capture um, and make sure students can continue to achieve some of this other stuff um, rather than just um, online delivery becoming just another lecture. So this is where we ended up. Um, we opted to live stream our dissection synchronously because we wanted to make sure that students could interact with each other and interact with members of teaching staff in real time, just like they would during a normal practical class. Um, we chose Microsoft Teams as our platform just simply because that's what students and staff were already familiar with using at this point. So as you can see, um, this is what the students would see at times during the session. Um, at the top left, um, we have a main member of teaching staff who would be leading the session, main demonstrator, um, and they would be filmed with a very high quality um, video camera, which was linked to the PC as the main webcam, so that when shown full screen for the majority of the session, the resolution um, of the images was high enough to show some of the granular detail of the dissections that were being carried out. Um, but you can also see that there are lots of other people present in the room. And um, so these are all assistants who were present and who were given um, devices. So they had an iPad or, or a personal laptop um, and they were present at times um, visually to answer and respond to questions or to have dialogue with the main um, demonstrator. Um, but they also had a really important role in forming a link between what was going on in the room and the students. So they were monitoring and interacting with the students via the Microsoft Teams chat. So this is what was going on inside the dissection room. So as you can see, we essentially just converted the dissection room to a film studio. So we had to erect additional lighting to make sure that the, everything could be visualized correctly. And um, we, um, uh, uh, um, technical staff effectively upskilled as film crew. So this is Sarah here um, with the camera. Um, we also had um, Will who was um, monitoring the audio visual quality throughout. Um, you can see that there are lots of people here um, interacting with the students and monitoring um, the team's feed on their laptops. They also had access to um, additional specimens so that those could be demonstrated and shown as when required. Um, and you can see that around the room, we also have um, high definition monitors. So those um, showed the team's feed as well, so that um, everyone in the room knew what was going on. As I said at the start, interactivity was the real key for us. So we tried to achieve this in a number of different ways. And um, so first of all, through verbal questioning. Um, so the main demonstrator would ask questions of the students um, and they could then respond to those questions through posting their responses in the chat. Um, and then critically, the assistants could read those responses out um, back to the main demonstrator so that they got the, the real time feedback from the students. And we ensured that students could um, question and write questions in the chat. And again, those could be read out by the assistants in the room at timely points during the session. Um, but students could also ask those questions verbally as well. So again, they're getting that real time um, feedback from members of staff within the room. We also pre-prepared a number of key facts, questions, um, prompts, um, supplementary images and clinical cases, which we posted in the chat at timely points during the session. Um, and that was really important because it acted as that kind of just-in-time teaching that we would normally be able to achieve by floating around 
from table to table in the dissection room um, and harnessing those kind of in the moment teaching opportunities. We also had um, some structured quizzes for some sessions um, and also for some of the later sessions we developed label along. So um, we pre-uploaded very high quality images um, of some of the, the dissections so that students would be able to label along um, as they watch the session. So as this is something that we had to pivot to very quickly, we haven't evaluated formally, um, but we do have quite a lot of feedback from the students, especially through module surveys and some, some that they've um, elected to provide to us um, subsequently. And so I won't read all of these out, but uh, the take home message is that students were students love these sessions um, they, they were really complimentary um, and some of their um, comments really suggested that that interactivity has helped their learning, uh, but also facilitated some of that skills development that we were trying to capture. So you can see comments about um, it was really important to them that their queries were being answered and the clinical relevance was, was clear um, and the dynamics of the session really allowed them to see how structures were moving and relating to each other in three dimensions. And, and the most important thing for us actually was this unintended outcome that you can see as the final point, um, which was that these sessions really facilitated a sense of belonging and community. Um, so vet students really have a strong sense of identity um, and being in the dissection room was, is part of that identity. So when that was taken away from them during the pandemic, that was a real problem for them. And um, so these sessions have really helped with um, making sure that they feel that they belong and are part of the community once again. Um, we have lots of opportunity to continue to develop these sessions. Um, so they were all recorded, so we now have a lovely bank of high quality videos that students can use for independent study and consolidation. And there's quite a high um, degree of transferability of these types of sessions. So we've already started to use them for cohorts of students who are on non-professional programmes who might not ordinarily have access to the dissection room. So we run an anatomy club um, where students can elect to learn anatomy in their own time as an extracurricular activity. Um, and so we've been running these um, dissections uh, virtually for that, them. There's also future potential for um, outreach and public engagement through these types of sessions. Um, and of course, these sessions don't have to focus on just anatomy and um, potentially other types of practical teaching could be exploited through this means. Um, and finally, um, we really want to uh, stick with some of these sessions um, as part of a blended learning offering. Um, so there are times during the year um, when our students are away from campus, perhaps they're on placement, perhaps they're away uh, on study leave preceding examinations. Um, so to be able to, to continue to um, provide these types of uh, sessions for students, even though for the most part, we're now back face to face uh, for much of our practical teaching um, is, a, is an ambition for us. So I'll stop there and um, I appreciate the session is short, but if anyone ha does have any questions, you're very welcome to contact any member of the team. Um, my email's there um, and my Twitter handle's there if anyone wants to, to get in touch. Um, but yeah, we're very happy to, to continue sharing what we've been doing at the RBC. Congratulations, Sarah and team. And um, I, I do love that photo <laughs> of everybody with their masks and their outfits on. It's excellent. Um, I, what, what I was hoping was that we might get the team, the RVC team uh, and Victoria Mills to uh, put on your cameras along with Wendy. And we'd like to get everybody on the screen at once so we can take a photo and, and register this. And, and welcome, Victoria. Brilliant that you're able to be with us again this year. Um, and I hope you'll you uh, agree that this was a very worthy prize yeah no absolutely it's it's really nice to be here and still feel part of this in some way and um i'm just you know the work that's been done is 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 fantastic so thank thanks very much for inviting me thank you everyone and congratulations again to our uh, to our winning team but also to to the other very worthy um applications that we had it really was uh, it was a difficult job to choose and if you you've now seen the quality of the winning panel you can imagine the quality of, of the other applications um so thank you to everybody and thank you to wendy for joining us and, and sharing that